The word ain't. You may have heard native speakers say it in real life or in movies or songs. What does it mean? And should you use it in your own speech and writing? That's what I'm going to teach you in this lesson. As always, there is a quiz at the end of the video to check your understanding. So let's start. All right, ain't is most commonly used in the place of three forms, am not, is not, and are not. Here's an example. You gotta believe me, I ain't lying. What does that mean? Well, it means the same thing as you have got to believe me, I am not lying. Here, ain't means am not. I want you to notice two other things in the first sentence. It has gotta, which is a contraction of got to, and the have is missing. It just says you gotta. The other thing is lion, in which the G is dropped. These are features of informal, colloquial spoken language. But the second sentence with the same meaning is more correct and acceptable in formal or semi-formal situations. So here's an important thing you should know. Ain't is a very informal word. So you should never use it in any formal or semi-formal situation, especially in writing. Okay, here's another example. That guy in the blue shirt. Ain't he the new manager? So what is the meaning of ain't here? The meaning is isn't. It's like saying, isn't he the new manager? Notice how this sentence has two parts. That guy in the blue shirt and ain't he the new manager. That's okay in informal speech, but the sentence is not well connected. To make it more grammatical, we can say, isn't that man in the blue shirt the new manager? It's more complex, but it's also more formal. All right, what about this example? A mother says to her child, you ain't getting no dessert until you eat your vegetables. Can you understand the meaning? It means you aren't getting any dessert until you eat your vegetables. Dessert means cake or ice cream or uh, something like that. So here, ain't means aren't. Notice that the sentence says, ain't getting no dessert. Ain't is already a negative, and then you have another no. This is called a double negative, and it is grammatically incorrect. But again, in very informal speech, you will hear that sometimes. Now, we've talked about using ain't in the place of am not, is not, and are not. But in some situations, you will also see the word used in the place of have not and has not. For example, we're going to New York to visit some relatives because we ain't been there in ages. It means because we haven't been there in ages. In ages means for a long time. Here's another one. I loaned Jim $100 two months ago and he ain't paid me back yet. What does ain't mean here? It means hasn't. I lent Jim $100 two months ago, but he hasn't paid me back yet. Lent is considered a little more formal than loaned, and the conjunction but fits better in the sentence when we're talking a little more formally. So here are all the sentences we've looked at. Can you see why ain't is considered bad English? It's because one word is used in the place of so many other words. So the listener gets the impression that your vocabulary is limited and that's why you're using ain't instead of the more accurate am not, isn't, aren't, haven't, or hasn't. In fact, many people in academic and professional circles consider ain't to be a word only used by less educated people. So my suggestion is that you avoid ain't. I don't use it personally. Now, if you need to say it as part of a joke or in a line from a movie, then it's okay. But in other situations, it's best to just not use this word. All right, if you're ready, it's now time for the quiz. There are five sentences on the screen. All of them are in very informal, non-standard English. I want you to rewrite all of these sentences so that they are more formal and correct. Stop the video, write out your answers, then play the video again and check. All right, here are the answers. How many did you get right? Let me know in the comments. 
If your answers were different from mine, you can ask me about that in the comments as well. If you like this lesson, give it a thumbs up by hitting the like button. If you're new to my channel, make sure to click that subscribe button and that bell icon next to it to get my latest lessons right here on YouTube. Happy learning and I will see you in another lesson soon.